Okay, so it's um, Monday after Christmas. I went to town today because this weather is supposed to go south on us pretty bad over this next week, so they say. I don't really trust them, but that's what they say. I had to Walmart today, so I decided I'd go ahead and pick up a tire for this side of the car. And uh, again, I said something on my last video about this tire having issues, hidden issues that I, and hopefully if this camera don't go dead or my phone don't go dead or none of that, I'll show you what the issues are when I get it off. The first thing I'm going to do is see if I learned anything from the last time and see if I learned how to get this tire off. Um, so we'll find out. I think I know pretty much how to do it now, but the, again, I may not. Uh, if I'm right, it should come right off of there and it should go right back on. And I guess we'll find out. Hopefully this time I can show you how to unmount the tire and mount the new one on there. Uh, camera went dead last time I'll try to check a little more careful this time and not stand there and talk to myself the whole time like I'm talking to you but I'm pretty interesting anyway so I don't mind talking to myself but anyway so I'm gonna I've got um, new tires already in the trunk of the car because I and I just decided last minute to go ahead and do this I've got my GoPro today instead of that little cheap at Castle camera or whatever that one is that I bought this is a, actually a cheap GoPro. It's the little Hero, which my suggestion, I'm gonna make a suggestion here. I'm not a camera expert by any means, but don't buy the Hero either. I mean, it's okay, uh, it's cheap. It has no viewfinder though. I mean, there's no, you have to have your, your, like you'll see me look at my phone occasionally because I'm looking at the, what's going on the camera on the phone. And, um, you know, it's kind of a hassle. It's kind of a bite. So uh, I know the rate. I don't think it has image st stabilization, st stabilization and stuff like that either. Whereas the more expensive GoPros, there's a reason why they're more expensive, have image stabilization. They have a few finder. And, uh, you know, I guess I could mount my phone up in front of the camera so I'd look at the camera instead of looking down away from you. But that's why I'm doing that. Um, which it works okay. I mean, the it makes a nice viewfinder but uh, again because it's remote it's separate from the camera I like that because I'll be able to control the camera control being is start and stop it I don't know what else I can do I don't know if I can zoom it or anything I'm not going to try but this little GoPro will be good to mount somewhere on the car it's it's really uh, I, I think you all know what a hero looks like I'll show it to you later if I remember I have to remember that stuff um, but uh, and I don't run out of battery juice. The thing about the GoPro is it it has to be charged up. You can't take the battery out and put another one in on the on this little hero. So if this runs out of battery juice, I switch to the phone or the little cheap camera, which has changeable batteries. But um, I also control the other little camera from the phone as well. But it has a viewfinder, and. Uh, not that it works very great and it sucks the batteries right down I mean you have to have them back in the charger uh, when you start so that's just a little camera point that has nothing to do with the car So, so anyway, we'll get right on that. I probably won't show you all of this process because it'd be rather boring, but I'll try to show you when I get it. I'm going to probably film the whole thing, or I guess it's not film anymore. It shows you my age. You can see my age. But uh, I'll probably record it and then just edit down so this isn't real long. But, uh, but I'll show you what I do to lift the car. And here in a minute, I'll, I'll get started. I'll show you the car currently is sitting at ride height. So, um, the, and I'll show you how I, to go from there. Like I said, I think I've, I've got her, I think I got her figured out. I hope, I hope, we'll see. So, uh, anyway, so, you know, welcome to my, 
part two experiment. Um, and hopefully we'll all learn something. From, I think I learned last time, and hopefully I'll be able to show you. I also, again, I, I wanted to show everybody how I change tires on wheels. Now, this is I learned this from my dad when I was probably, you know, 12, 13, in that range, and uh, taking tires off of wheels, and I learned a lot of that. I used it a lot when I was younger because I didn't have any money, so... Hey, you know what? We I changed tires a lot because I was always using old used tires that my dad gave me, and I'd run them until they wouldn't hold air anymore, and uh, and he'd give me another one I'd put on there. And uh, uh, this car has never had it did for there for a short while. I had said I could match tires on it. Uh, I had the radial TAs on here, and they were all shell all matched. Um, you know, I could say that. Well, right now they're matched. Yeah, they're all Ford Douglas tires, but obviously the front ones are 15 inch. And the rear ones are 16 inch so they still don't match uh, i bought this the one today and the guy said well, as long as you keep them rotated they should last a while they got real they're not very good tires they're thankful they're made in the usa that's what they say on them anyway which is a bonus but they got a they got a really low tread wear life on them i can't tell you what it is off the top of my head but it's not very high and uh I said, well, I can't rotate them because they're 15 inches on the front and 16 inches on the back, so I can stop them side to side, but that's as far as it goes. So, uh, and they're not that fun to get off of there. Again, I don't know. I'd like to put radial TAs on it. I like the white letter tires. I think they look appropriate on a 60s car or Coopers, but they need to match. I need matching. I want them to match. So the 15s, I don't know if we can get a 16-inch radial TA. I'll have to check. But uh, that's the big issue then. A 16, I don't know, probably shouldn't have done them. They kind of treat them like redheaded stepchildren. So the, I don't know how many years I'm able to get 16. I've changed like 17 inch wheels or something, which I really don't want to do. I don't want to have little narrow sidewalls because they just don't look right to me. I know a lot of guys do them on a, on a 60s car. To me, they don't look right. I like a sidewall. And even with, you know, putting 16s, 15s and 16s, my sidewall shorter. Um, not terribly shorter, but it is shorter. I do like the setup I've got because I've had, you know, people here and they didn't couldn't tell that the t they were, you know, different sized wheels and tires because the rear tire is exactly an inch bigger in all dimensions than the front tire. It's an inch wider and it's an inch taller, and so and the wheels an inch taller. So the sidewalls are the same height, which is that's what I was trying to get, and uh, or proportionately they're the same height and so the you know that's why I like them. these Douglas were a match set and they were cheap I, I think I bought this one today for fifty two dollars or something of course that's just carry out I didn't have it mounted naturally but because I'm cheap and and I the front ones were they're all about the same price they don't change in price much they're I think 53 and these were 50 five or so again they're just that not that much bigger than the 15s i kind of seem to think the front ones were the little sign today where i when i picked these up said starting at 53 dollars so i don't know what the smallest size is i think it's a 195 something but uh which may be what i have i don't know not, there's a narrow one narrow one this is 70 series i've got on the front of the car and they have a a, a narrow like a uh 75 or I don't know some they're all weird to me anymore but uh so the rear ones are, are uh, well I think these are all I know the rear ones are 60 series tires and I'm thinking the front are are 70 series tires I, I'll have to look for sure but I'll put put it on the little thing down here at the bottom right here right right there later and uh I've already put on what these are but um Anyway, so let's get to trying to get that off of there and get the tire changed. And again, hopefully I can show you everything as far as changing the tire. Okay, I hope you can hear me. I'm a long ways away from the camera. That's the problem with using this uh, cell phone. Jack car up. It's got jack stand on each side right here. In the case of my car, it's underneath the subframe connector on uh, both sides. This one I got a little higher than the other side. Taking my lug nuts off. I have the floor jack, as you can see, under the left side. 
under the shock absorber and lifting up on that. So let's see what happens. And for those that might wonder, I have my safety glasses on and my gloves. They're not the best gloves in the world. Uh, I don't really think I need safety glasses, but uh, they're actually also reading glasses, so they're reading safety glasses. And I do need reading glasses, and they might as well be safety glasses. So let's see what happens. Came right off. So that's what we're looking for. But just enough to tilt that. Doesn't take a lot. Let's go ahead and get this tire changed out. Alrighty. This may take us a while. My phone's going dead. So I have to go ahead and charge it up. Um, but that's it'll be just seconds for you, maybe a little bit for me. So get as much as I can real quick before I take it and charge it. Right behind my truck. There's my tire. First thing you gotta do, let the air out. If you need one of these little careful, you don't let it, it'll come shooting out if you're not careful. And uh So just when you think you're about to come out, just keep your hand on it. And I stop it. And then that right there, and that right there. Get that right air out of there. Pop the bumper jack. You may never notice that the bumper jack is actually curved on the back here. It fits right on the wheel. I have a better, I have a bumper jack with a hook on it, but it's back in the back of the shed and I don't dig or I can get it. <clears throat> I've got this one. This is the one that's supposed to hook in a hole in the bumper, but it'll work on here. I can hook it under the edge of my truck bumper. Got a piece of cardboard down to kind of halfway protect my wheel. You probably have to stand on this one side because it'll want to flip up on you, but I always kind of keep my hand on top of the jack stand too. Or the jack, I mean the bumper jack, because if it flips out, I don't want to dent in the back of my truck. So you just jack her down like this. Here in a minute, it'll be picking the back of the truck up. You really don't have to jack any more than that. And it'll I don't know if you can hear it. It's this is just like the thing they use at the tire shop. This is just a machine. It's hydraulic. Let's see how we get here. There it goes. Break it loose, try not to you lose your shoe. Now what your goal is here, once you're breaking that loose, we'll go ahead and do the same on the back. Now the back's a little bit harder on this wheel because the wheel's deeper on the back. But uh you don't have to use truck. Flip it over. Do the same thing on this. One. This one usually goes easier. I mean, easier is a relative term because it's got to go a long, long ways down right here. And uh,
there is an easier way to do this. I think I said that. I didn't say that in the other one because it didn't record. The easier way to do is take a tire store and have them put them on there. But you may not always have that ability. And it's a good thing to know how to do. <clears throat> I say I haven't done it, well, since the last one. It's last week, but before that it had been 20 or 30 years since I changed a tire myself. I would bite at that. around a little bit that helps to get that foot of that jack up under the wheel like that I just go on the move them all the way around now it goes in pretty easy right there so. Okay, that took about an hour or so to get my phone charged back up. The one thing that you got to have is a phone. So, in the meantime, while I was not just idle, I went ahead and finished up the back of that. So, what you and then I run tape around the wheel, try to protect the wheel just a little. Tape kind of tears right off, but you'll need a couple of levers. Of course, in this case, I got the tire spoon and I got a pry bar. And you, Put that under there. You can keep the the uh, lever in there, and then just work your way around. Like I say, you want to keep the tire in this slot right here. Here in a minute, it'll get. Easy. Er. The more of it you get loose up here. Don't need that more. I don't believe. Because it's far enough now, see it's coming off right here. So just work your way around. Easy. 
easy now. And that's what you do for that. And then sort of repeat the process on the other bead. It doesn't hurt to have this wheel up on something, but I think we can do it just like we are here. This little thing here is pretty handy. Like I said in the last video, now, I didn't have one. When my uncle passed away. It was in his garage. So my aunt said, take it. So I did. But this is just a pry bar. Problem is, I say, we'll just go ahead and do it. We'll try the step ladder. I should have my center cap out of there. Getting my center cap up. This one usually comes out let's say, fairly easy. Put quotes on that. Because once it gets started, it usually pulls right out. The tape may not be helping. Take the end of this up. Be nice if it had a rubber coat coating on it or something. Maybe a rubber coating would be bad. I don't know. But tape don't like to stay. Well, let's see what we can do here. Wasn't a very good choice. Just leave it up like this. See, that one usually comes out pretty easy. Not like that. Now, now we're going to put the new one on there. Face side up. 
I gotta get the tire. And these are not directional tires, but what I did, this little barcode that's right here, I put it on the back, on the inside. Use this as the back of the tire. I don't know if it is, make there if it makes a difference. So, what helps get that on there? How about some soap or soap on there? I happen to have bubbles. Uh, somewhere I've got some little um, acid brushes that would fit right in there. Problem is, the rat likes rats like to carry them off, and so I can't put it up. And they're put up right now. They want to drag one out. And I had this chip brush. I'm just gonna use it. Take a little bit of soap. Soap up this bead on this on the back side. And we're just gonna set that down on there. Now the tape may not help them. They ought to have it off a little bit. Let's see. Most of the time, you can get this edge in to this skinny part, and you can just push this on there. Help us along here. Just take small bites. Same thing here. Just soap up this bead. This one's a little more difficult, but it's not that bad. Again, that Leopold's uh, it's in the sitting in the back bead sitting in there. And start on this edge and sometimes you can probably wait for me but you can just push them on there take little bites again don't try to get it all in one shot I'd probably take the tape back off of there. I'm not very wise. Push this down again so we get it in this part of the feed. Let's take that tape off. That doesn't make no difference now. When I was a kid, we didn't have fancy stuff. We just had what we had. Like I said, I learned from my dad. I wish I knew he was teaching me at the time, not just making me do stuff. I never knew. If you've ever heard a story about building fence, that was an ordeal. My brother had one summer building a hog pen. You know, he Told us we had a big, a big hog pen too. It was a, probably a good acre. He gave us a post. Said, "Well, I'm at work. You, know, you guys are just here goofing off anyway. Put that hog pen up for the pig. So, you know, we we did fast as we could. You know, summer." My brother's two years older than me, and, uh, you know, we wanted to go out and play, not work. So we sure as heck got those fence posts in there. My dad got home from work, 
comes out and looks at that, says that ain't them are crooked. Those are oh, he was this those aren't good at all. So he said, what you guys do tomorrow? You know, pull all those out and put them in straight. I said, oh, okay. Showed us how to use an old bar and a chain. Pull those fence posts out. So me and my brother spent the next day pulling out the old fence posts, putting them back in. Well, we made sure we got them straight. My dad comes home, he looks at him and says, nope, that ain't good enough. Because we didn't have them the same height up and down. He said, those all need to be the same height and uh, spaced even. So, next day, me and my brother pulled all of those fence posts back out. Put him back in. Made sure we used. I think my brother's shoulder. He was taller than me. As the height of the fence post. Now the one thing we didn't do is get them spaced. They're right, you know, equal distances apart. Dad comes home. He said, "The hell, they're good on height, but they're not equally spaced." So. Uh, said tomorrow, I want you to pull them back out and get those in there equally spaced. So the next day, me and my brother pulled all those things spells back out. We got them the right height. We got them evenly spaced. My dad comes home from work. He looks at him and goes, that'll work. You guys did a good job. I don't know, he probably didn't tell us that. I don't think he ever told us that hardly. But, uh... So... We put that hog fence up. I don't know. Three times. The post. But... The moral of that lesson there is... I've never put a crooked fence up since, so... I learned... How to, how to put fence posts, put a fence up. So around our house growing up, that's how you learn stuff. You, you learn by doing and redoing until you had it right. And I've put a lot of fence up since then, like I say, and I know how to build a fence. I know how to take fence, fence posts out. Uh, definitely learned that. Anyhow, I, I did learn how to change tires. And I had to be a little more careful here because I really like not to stand these up. have a lot of money growing up so I kind of tried to be careful with what you had I bought that comet between my junior and senior year in the high school I paid for it I didn't have much of a job our cost almost $400. Tell you what, when you're making maybe $75, and I think every two weeks I made 75 bucks, maybe. I don't remember. I'm washing dishes at a church camp. 
and uh, my dad bought the Comet and I said I'll pay you back for it if I want it to be mine and I did every time I got paid I don't remember Paving $25 or something like that. Took me all summer to get paid off. And I said, why didn't I get even $75? Well, I just had to buy gas and I paid for my own insurance. <laughs> so, and tires. Again, I told you earlier, he gave me lots of tires out of old scrap tire piles. One being taken off other stuff. And uh, so they were never good. <clears throat> Every day I'd go out before I'd go to work or go to school and be airing my tires up. And I think one day I come in there and just I'll be frustrated. So I'm getting tired airing them tires up. <laughs> and my dad said. Why don't you just take the day off from school and uh, we'll run down Springfield Tire Store and we'll find some tires for you. Well, two. And uh, we went down to Springfield and went to General Tire. Bought a set of pair of blims. Come home and put them on my car. I don't remember what was wrong with them. They were little skinny tires, so I put them on the front. And uh, probably weren't round, I don't know. I ran them on the car for a long time, though. First new tires I actually had. So, I had a wider set that were on the back. Wider, wider is relative there. They were not wide by any means. They were wider than the skinny front ones, though. Another little story about my dad. Bought this car. I was 17. And uh, between my junior year and senior year of high school. <clears throat> and uh, brakes never did work good on that car. That's why I went to so much trouble with what I got on there now. My dad, he said, you can't drive that car until you get the brakes fixed. And so, every day after I got home from school or work or whatever I was doing, I was out there adjusting on them brakes, trying to get the brakes working good and even and all that stuff. And he'd come home, drive the Comet down in the driveway back up and say nope that ain't good enough oh, that seemed like it went on for eternity I know it didn't finally one day he came home and drove it and said I think you got it I was the happiest person he ever was all right you get my air hose you leave your of course uh, uh, valve stem out let's put some air in this thing to seat the bead Now I'm going to give you a little advice here. This is one of these moments where I say, do what I say, not what I do. It really is nice if you've got one of these fillers that will clip on there. Well, it just so happens mine does not. Because probably one of the most dangerous things you do is seat, seat this bead. And because uh, you've got to put a lot of air pressure in there. I don't know, I've never seen it happen, but I guess there's the possibility 
of um, blowing the tire out and your face over it won't do your face no good. So it's nice if you can clip that on there and get stand back while it does this, but we'll see if we can do it without killing ourselves. I have another one of these, but it won't work if it clips on, but it won't work unless there's a valve stem in there. You can't have a valve stem because you don't get enough airflow. I guess you saw me kind of bounce it around a little bit. Help get the bead kind of where it was not leaking air out. I don't have enough volume here to overcome the air leaking around the edge. Another one in. I had somewhere I had one of the clips on, where it is. Now this one is the type that you want. Clips on. Let's see what it does. I don't. I tried it with that uh, log splitter and couldn't get it to put no air in there. Got the valve stem. Working now. Let's try a little bit of soap, so maybe it'll seal it enough to get her going. I should be able to see any leaks. Bounce around a little bit more. <laughs> the reason the problem is this. Stay on there. Do it this time, I think. That's satisfying sound. Let me do it on the back side. Come on. There it goes. Not quite a satisfying sound. But this point you ought to be able to mouse them back in there. We'll put 32 pounds of air in there. Call it good. I 
and get my The reason that is, is I got these little short valves down. They look neat, but boy, in practice, why not have my end of my... Alright, she is at 32 and a half pounds, or 32 pounds. Cap back on there. Nice thing about the soap bubble. If there's any leaks of the bead, you can see them. And I don't see any, so. I'm worried about the valve stems are. Like it's not tight enough. Well, it's been holding there, so. I'm going to continue to do so. So. Let's go see if we can get it back on the car. We are back in here. It's getting a little dark. Uh, it's well after four o'clock. Having to recharge my batteries wasn't helpful at all. Let's see if that'll slide back on. It's got full air in it. The car's still right where it was when it came out of there. Ford Explorer rear end is supposed to be torqued to 100 foot pounds. Probably supposed to do it in stages, so we'll do a little quick, a little tighten on, and then we'll go around and do them. Do them in star pattern as normal. I may let the car down to finish them. And that one's 100 already. Hundred foot pounds really not very much. So, you might be saying, what is wrong with this tire? Why did I take it off of there? Let's see if you can see this. Down there. I can find them. Now this may have never caused an issue. You can see right there, right there, kind of tore the bead. There. And right here I got a 
bad one. So this is actually probably a good tire. I don't know. They have some on this side too. I don't know. But I'm just not comfortable with that. You see how hard those are to change? So this will probably... I'm keeping I'll keep it. I mean, it's... I put it on a wheel sometime. I don't have a 16-inch wheel to put it on. But I'll come up with one. I don't know if I use it for a spare. A little bit big for a spare. But if it was to go on a trailer, I actually still have the side plug tire, but I wouldn't want to use it. But anyway, that's why I changed it. My phone's about to go dead again because I didn't get a full charge on it. I got it. I didn't want to wait around all day for it to charge. Uh, I charged the camera up at the same time. I think it's doing okay. But uh, I'm down to 40% on the phone. And it was at 80s all I got it up to. I didn't, like I said, I didn't fully charge it. So, but I'm going to, this video won't be as long as what I've recorded, obviously, because I'll, I'll edit it down. And, uh, but hopefully I'll give you enough. I mean, you kind of see, again, as I said, that's how my dad taught me how to do it. May not be the best way to do it. And, uh, I'm not real good at it because well, it's been a long time since I've done it. If I did it every day, I'd probably get a little quicker at it, a little faster at it. But um, it is what it is. Uh, you know, it's it's changed. I mean, I know most of you are going to say, why in the world you don't just take that and have those changed? Well, they charge me 20 bucks a tire, or give or take. And I'm cheap. I'd rather struggle with it for a couple hours and just change it myself. Now, the tires all need balanced. Um, none of them have been balanced. Uh, so I'll probably have to have them spin balance sometime. But... Uh, the I'm good for you know, 10, 20, 30,000 miles now. I don't know what the rating is on these tires, but uh, I'm still good for a little while. But uh, so anyway, uh, I hope you guys, you know, get some entertainment anyway if you don't learn something out of these little videos I make. Uh, by any means, obviously, I, I'm going to say this. You know it to be true. I'm not a professional. And I don't. I, again, I don't know I'm doing it. I'm just, this is a way to do it. If it the way to do it, I don't know. The way to do it is spend 40 bucks and have the tire store do it and balance them. But I didn't. So uh, Walmart should have gave me a deal. I think they did. I think I, don't, I didn't have to pay the mountain balance charge. But uh, I'm not, I hope I don't run no more tires for a while. I like to wear them out a little bit. Uh, obviously, the front tires... Until this gets an alignment on it, I'm going to wear. Uh, thanks for the advice, guys, on what to do. I'm going to try just cutting the holes longer in the front end. And, uh, you know, we'll, so I have a little more adjustment in there. And then I'll see if I can't get the, you know, camber caster and the toe set on the car roughly. Uh, I, I mean, I'm still going to take it and have it done on a round. I want it to be close, and I like them to line the rear end, too, because it is adjustable. I mean, it's got the four link on it. One of these days, I keep trying to talk my wife into a lift here, so I put this car up on lift. Plus one, when I put on lift and get the truck under it, and I get the truck inside that way. And then I don't. I was going to build on the front of the shed, so I would have enough. Uh, that's why there's no front in it. You wonder why? Why haven't you built the front of the shed? Well, I've had plans to build on the front, but again, as I think I put this in the forum. Uh, I've been looking. I, I was been watching Vice Grip Garage. You guys are probably familiar with that. And um, he put the wildfire lift in, and I went and looked at the wildfire lifts, and I really think I'd like to have one of those. Um, and they're not cheapest. They're about four grand. Um, but watching them assemble one, they're all pre-assembled, basically. You just have to bolt them together. You don't have to run the plumbing. You don't have to do any of that on them. The, the cylinder's in place already and all those kind of things. And uh, looks like it'd be quicker to go. Sorry about the compressor. Uh, so anyway, you know, thanks for uh, wasting your time watching this. And again, I hope you learned something. And I will talk to everybody later.